All right, guys, welcome and good evening. This is Wild Outdoor Living, and today I'm going to be talking about the Bond Trigger Wave Cell Blaze. Bond Trigger just launched a new line of helmets with Wave Cell technology. Wave Cell is a separate company from Bond Trigger, and the study that they posted claims that in a particular crash, which is hitting a 45 degree angle uh, at 6.2 meters per second with a surrogate neck attached to the prosthetic head that the helmet was attached to, that in a standard helmet, you have a 58% chance of a concussion in that particular crash. With a MIPS helmet, you're down to 36%, but with a wave cell helmet, you're down to 1.2%. Now they tested several different scenarios, several different, different speeds and angles, and that particular test was where they got the best results for wave cell. So I really can encourage you guys to read those studies down in the, in the description down below. There's also a link to the Virginia Tech uh, rating that they gave a bunch of helmets. These wave cell helmets got a five star rating and so did a few others as well, which is worth noting. Uh, I think there's gonna be a lot of controversy. I know MIPS is already angry at wave cell and bond trigger for the claims that they've made. So we'll see how that plays out, uh, what the actual safety um, performance is out of these helmets, you know, given a few more tests. However, I do think that these are probably some of the safest, if not the absolute safest half shell helmets on the market today. And given the opportunity to buy one, I bought them the first day they came out. I do get a discount on, on buying trigger helmets at the shop I work at. I also get a discount on Giro, Scott, a whole bunch of others. So. Uh, this was the helmet I chose on my own, but it's worth noting I do get a discount on there because this is a $300 helmet, so figured you guys would probably want to know that up front. In terms of the features on the Blaze, so uh, the, the largest thing that we're going to notice is the new wave cell technology. I thought this stuff was going to be pretty rubbery. It's not. It's pretty plasticky. It's quite rigid. It does have a decent amount of flex to it if you push on it, and if you put the helmet on and push it side to side, you can feel it flex with your head, which is quite reassuring. It definitely feels like it will crumple, um, flex and slide in the way that they describe. And it feels like a much more substantial safety feature than MIPS or standard EPS foam, uh, just based on initial impressions. Uh, it is, I would say, pretty well ventilated. That is one thing a lot of people are asking about. I will say the ventilation, in the rides I've been on so far has been just fine. I don't feel like it's any hotter than my standard helmets. However, it is about 50 degrees outside at the hottest, so not a great uh, temperature to test in. But uh, when it gets hotter, I will definitely keep you guys updated. So this thing has one of my favorite buckles of all time, the flip lock. So get that thing in basically just the right area and it buckles itself. So I can hold the helmet and buckle this thing with one hand pretty amazing. It's not going to make a difference for safety, but it's a high-end feature and at $300 this thing better have it. The other wave cell helmets also all have this and it's worth noting that um, two of those helmets are $150. They get the same straps, they get the BOA dial, they get the flip lock. The only real difference with the Blaze is you're getting this magnetic blender mount. Um, and you're also getting more coverage out of this mountain style helmet. The Triple X is a little bit lighter and a little bit more aero. That's the other helmet that costs $300 in this line. I would say if you're not specifically mountain biking, the Spectre that I've seen in person and the Charge are both basically the same quality. I'm a little confused about the pricing, but this is a new technology. And if it offers significantly more safety, you know, uh, that's definitely a purchase you may decide to make a lot cheaper than the effects of a concussion over time, certainly. So the BOA dial, I think, is a great addition. It's a little bit smoother. It's also worth noting that this helmet has a crash replacement guarantee within the first year. So if you have an impact on this helmet within the first year, they give you a new one. That's a big deal. This is an expensive helmet. I'm glad that that is there but all Bond Trigger helmets have that guarantee as well. So, uh, big deal with these. I would say the fit is fine. Uh, I'll show you just right now how this looks on me because you know some helmets do look pretty bulbous, but as I put this on, you know, you can tighten the bow dial. I feel like this is very comfortable. No pressure points at all. The wave cell kind of flexes ever so slightly to fit your head. 
So I have, I'm not having really any issues with it, really liking the pads. It does feel slightly different than your standard helmet. Um, but as you can see, I, I think, I don't look great in helmets, but this is kind of as good as it's gonna get, I think. I feel like it's a good fitting helmet. I don't see too much of the visor. I actually see more of the visor on this helmet than I do on this one. So I rode this on my gravel bike and normally would have an issue with that helmet being able to see actually. Um, but this one, I can see the visor, but it's not much of a problem. And when I've been riding it, except for when I've been analyzing it, I haven't really noticed that it's there, haven't thought about it, really just been thinking about what I'm doing on the bike. So I think fit, you know, is gonna be a personal thing. But overall, I don't think there's any major issues with the way that this thing fits. The weight is a little bit more than a standard helmet, but holding these two, it's really hard to tell which one is lighter. This one is a little bit heavier, but uh, the, the difference is very small. I don't think it's gonna be an issue in terms of weight as far as that goes. The, I have noticed that this visor is basically an up or down only option. There's not as much adjustability as some other uh, enduro style helmets. Otherwise, super nice padding. Comes with an additional set of padding in the box as well. So you can choose what style you would like to run. I haven't tried that yet. The magnetic mount for the light, pretty awesome. It'll pop off in a crash um, and really easy to take on and off. I'll be testing this more. I know some people have had issues with these uh, on other Bond Trigger helmets in the past, but I'm glad to see it there. I will be actually getting a GoPro soon to hopefully enhance these videos a little bit. And that will be a nice feature for me to use uh, from time to time. So overall, like I say, I've only had it a few days. I've taken it on a 20 mile gravel ride as well as several commutes on the mountain bike. And overall, I've been impressed. I think it's probably one of my favorite helmets that I've had so far. But like I say, only time will tell. So if you guys have any questions, definitely let me know in the comments below. Please read those studies if you're interested in the safety. And you should keep riding uh, as safely as you can because no helmet is gonna prevent all injuries. So let me know about any questions, please. I will try to get to as many as I can. I'm not a scientist or doctor, um, but I can help direct you in the right direction in terms of getting you guys some more information. So. Yeah, I'm excited about this. I think, I think the fact that uh, you know Trek had some big marketing claims saying this is the biggest change in 30 years. I don't know if this helmet is the biggest change in 30 years, but Trek getting involved with the marketing team that they have uh, and and getting people all riled up, I think is going to push the industry forward uh, tremendously. I think we're going to see much safer helmets from all companies in the near future, and I'm really excited about those those companies going to battle with each other over something that I think actually does matter. So, pound off your bike, uh, doesn't really matter. Uh, carbon on your bike, also doesn't matter. The suspension, nope. Uh, getting home at the end of each ride, that is what matters. Being able to continue having fun in cycling, I think that's what matters as well. And having a brain that allows you to do that, yeah. That's, that's important. We'll catch you later, guys.